Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today, we're going to talk about the intraoperative consultation and specifically a frozen section for intraoperative consultation. This is a very important part of a pathologist's job, and it's um, quite important to helping our surgeon uh, colleagues uh, perform the best care for patient care. So what ends up happening is a surgeon will get to a certain point in the surgery where he needs help. He needs help in saying whether or not a, uh, the, the edge of the excised tumor is positive or negative. He needs help in deciding what to do next, depending on what the diagnosis of the, of the, of the lesion is. So for, for varying reasons, a surgeon would want to have an intraoperative consultation for, from a pathologist and ask the pathologist to perform a frozen section. Um, and this occurs for a variety of reasons, but this is basically the way that it goes. So here's a depiction of, of the, the situation under which a intraoperative consultation will happen. Okay. So a patient is in the operating room. They're on the table. Uh, the surgeon is operating. The patient is under general anesthesia and is sleeping through the entire thing. And the surgeon gets to a point in the in the operation where uh, he he needs a consultation from the pathologist. He needs help from the pathologist to help him decide what to do next. And so what he does is he takes a little piece of of the lesion or the margin or any part of the of the tissue that he wants the pathologist to take a look at. And he'll send that specimen to the surgical pathology laboratory. And in this laboratory, a pathologist and, and various assistants will take a look at that specimen and examine it in a variety of ways, which I'll get to in just a second. And then the pathologist will make a preliminary diagnosis. And preliminary means you're, you're basically putting it into the ballpark as far as diagnosis goes. Um, if it's a lymphoma, you might not be able to say exactly which lymphoma it is, but you can say, hey, it's within a lymphoma classification. If it's a, um, a margin uh, where the, the surgeon is trying to determine, okay, did I get all of the tissue out, all the bad tumor out, or is there still some left in, back in the patient? If the margin is positive, then the pathologist will say, yes, there's still tumor in the patient. Um, and so he needs to excise more tissue. So whatever the case may be, the pathologist will give a preliminary diagnosis and he or she will call that um, back to the surgeon or go to the operating and speak to the surgeon. Either way, the pathologist will communicate the results of the um, preliminary diagnosis of this specimen to the surgeon in the operating room. Once the surgeon gets that, um, the, the preliminary uh, findings, he or she will make a decision as to how best to proceed. So there are some cases where um, having a certain diagnosis will um, uh, spur the surgeon to continue cutting out uh, tumor, to continue cutting out uh, tissue and uh, examples of this include where it's a uh, tumor that can be grossly excised or there's a tumor that can uh, the surgeon feels like he can get it all out um, so he will continue on with the surgery of trying to excise this uh, tissue. There are other situations where the pathologist's information to the surgeon would cause the surgeon to stop performing surgery. So an example of that would be lymphoma. Lymphoma is not a um, disease process that is treated with surgery. It is a disease process that is treated with chemotherapy. So if the pathologist calls the surgeon and says, hey, it's a lymphoma, then the surgeon will stop what he's doing, close up, finish the operation, um, and then uh, tell the, the patient um, Tell the patient to uh, get hooked up with an uh, uh, oncologist that can help them. So what does it look like when we take this surgical specimen 
in the surgical pathology laboratory. And what do we do with that? Well, the first thing that we're going to do with that is uh, look at the tissue and pick out which part is most integral to um, discovering what what the question is. So if the question is, what's the diagnosis, we're going to take the section that looks most like tumor. If the question is, uh, what's the margin, then we're going to evaluate the margin. So depending whatever the surgeon's question is, that's the answer that we're trying to make. So what we do is we take the tissue and we cut it up into the appropriate um, pieces of whatever we're uh, trying to get to answer the question. We lay it out um, in this little well here. We lay out the tissue in the little well, and then we fill up this well with this certain material. This is called OTC. And, and basically, um, OTC is a special material that is liquid at room temperature, but then it freezes solid when, it, when it's cold. So in that respect, it's similar to water. So we can uh, lay these tissues out uh, like so, and then we can put this entire thing into a, uh, a special freezer called a cryostat. And uh, cryo means cold, okay? So we can take this and we can put it on this chuck so that, uh, so that we can cut it, which I'll get to in just a second. Uh, we take this tissue and we put the chuck on it, and now the tissue is attached to the chuck. Okay, so we froze the tissue, we um, uh, put this little block on it to help it freeze, you take the chuck off, and now we're looking at the tissue which is frozen onto the chuck. Okay, so it's formed into this kind of ice block of sorts, and we can take the back of this chuck here, and we can load it into a special um, uh, cutting device called a microtome, and the, the microtome will make these very thin slices. We'll um, slice across here very, very thinly to make a, a, this square-shaped sheet of uh, ice with a little bit of tissue on it. And it's a very, very thin slice. And we can put that tissue onto a glass slide, and then we can stain it. And now we can see the tissue that is um, stained here and this is a higher up view and we can see that tissue that's stained here. So this part particular example is looking at a piece of skin but it's the same thing that we do with brain it's the same thing that we can do with um, with essentially any other tissue except for bone that gets a little hard to cut but um, it, essentially any other tissue we can we can do this um, and what that does is it helps us to quickly evaluate uh, the tissue so that we can get an example back, uh, we can get a uh, answer back to the surgeon while the patient is still on the table. Because while we're doing all of this, the patient is still on the table, they're still um, under gen general anesthesia, and the, the surgeon is um, uh, still uh, got them open on the table. So we want to do this as quickly as possible, and this is one of the ways that we do it, and, and um, we can help the surgeon in a quick, fast manner. The only downfall for that this, well, one of the major downfalls for this is this is not a very pretty um, appearance of uh, the skin uh, on microscopy. Um, if we had more time, we could process this tissue in a much more. We could process this tissue in a more effective way that al allows for seeing the intricate details of the tissue um, that allow for a much more uh, definitive and. Um, informed diagnosis. But basically, this is the quick and dirty way that we can uh, get a fast answer back to the surgeon. Um, usually, this is uh, um, pretty effective in getting in the ballpark of talking about whether we see tumor or not, or what is the general uh, gist of what's going on for, for this tissue. Um, it's, not the, it's not the best quality, um, and, and that is known by the surgeon and the pathologist that there are limitations to what we can see on this frozen tissue. Um, but the, the quickness of it um, makes it very valuable for intraoperative consultations. 
Okay, so that is a very quick and brief overview of how pathologists help the surgeons during an intraoperative consultation, um, specifically a frozen section. There are other ways that we can do intraoperative consultations, which I can talk about at another time. Okay, so that concludes this uh, session. Please join us next time at Adventures in Neuropathology on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, thank you.